Hi there, everybody. This is Val of the Nexus. And this is Jew of the Nexus. And this is the first ever Nexus Splatoon tournament commentary provided by us. As you can see here, this is our um, bracket. Our first match up is going to be Ted versus Cab. Yeah, I was lucky in this bracket. I got the first buy. Yep, you see Jews there as the first buy. So, really interestingly, Cab is brand new to the Nexus. Yes, yes. Um, we also have a, a pretty interesting matchup here. This is uh, uh, a pretty good matchup of guns and uh, okay and stuff so and stuff. Yeah, cam. yeah. As we can see here, we're currently watching the screen of Ted. He's better known as Trevor in the Nexus, but his arcade name is Ted. Is Ted? I, I believe this is because he likes to play the game. Have you met Ted? Have you have you met Ted? I have met Ted. <laughs> So, uh, so kind of an interesting little tidbit about this tournament, as you can see with our gorilla filming. Um, this is done when the game first came out. So, um, majority of the people that are actually playing it, this is either the first or the second time they've ever played Splatoon. That's correct. And uh, we did have a couple of people in the house that had put their hands on the game before. Some of us, you know, owned the game. But it was actually a pretty good skill gap. I, I don't think anybody got completely bodied. Uh, I don't necessarily think so. Um, the uh, <laughs> the the major nice thing about there. I know right the the major thing about this fight between Cab and Ted is that both of these players were remarkably fresh. Um, Cab had only played Splatoon for one game um, before this one. And the first time Ted ever played was uh, at this tournament. That's correct. Um, and uh, as you're seeing here, the, the players are, are starting to get a real feel for the controls. This isn't really the, you know, we're, we're going after you cutthroat game. This is more of the, uh, I can't figure out how to make up happen game. So the um, interesting thing for those of you who are watching the tournament don't know the rules, in Splatoon, uh, this is the balloon version of the game. And the goal is to pop balloons to gain points, but more interestingly is when you shoot your opponent, you eliminate points from them. That's correct. And uh, uh, one thing I was noticing is that the more points your opponent has, the more points they lose if they die. It actually turns into somewhat of a regulator, and it tends to make the end of matches very interesting. At the Nexus, we oftentimes refer to this as the rubber band effect, and it's built into most Nintendo, uh, right Nintendo games. Now what we have here is uh, uh, Cab is being very, very good about laying out uh, like pass walls that Ted can't get through, uh, setting up those sprinklers and uh, separating himself from the, uh, the points. It's not working out too well from a strategy standpoint. Oh, great kill right there. And see, and there it, it, it just equalized itself. We went from having an almost runaway game to uh, pretty, pretty close to each other. What you'll definitely see when it comes to Splatoon is a lot of the... Uh, real points. A lot of the game is a late game. game yeah. That just because you are ahead by even 20 points in the first minute doesn't mean that you will win in the second minute of the game. That's correct. God damn it, dude. Ted takes even more of that lead with a good kill. Now, let's talk a little bit about choosing weapons in this uh, game. So, there's a lot of different weapons you have to choose from in Splatoon. You have rollers, you have splatter shots, right. you have sniper rifles. Um, I, for the majority of Splatoon's gameplay, I prefer the roller, but in the balloon fight, I think the roller is actually a disadvantage. Uh, I would agree with that. Um, now, we did have a player here who you will see who played the roller very well. Uh, but I feel like the gun weapons give you much more of an advantage. Because it's way harder to be sneaky yeah, kill that dog. with yeah. the roller. Yeah, well, and... and uh, At least in this mode. For me, a big part of the balloon fight is mobility. Right. Is getting really close to where the balloons are going to be right before they spawn. And I think the roller, while it covers a lot of ground, um, it doesn't necessarily allow you to climb giant walls as efficiently as the splatter shot or the sniper rifle. Oh, yeah. That's correct. So as we can see right here, uh, just a moment ago, Ted was ahead of the game, and now Cab has taken the lead, and just like that, Ted took the score back. That is how efficient 
this game is at um, keeping the players close together as far as the competition is concerned. Well, and the skill gap's really interesting because it's one of the few shooter games I've ever played where you pick it up fairly quickly, but mastery, as we have seen, is uh, something that's a little bit harder to maintain. Well, and that's a, uh, that's a, a concept that has ruled the arcades for ages. Easy to pick up, difficult to master. That is the formula for a game that will stand the test of time. Which, um, maybe I'm, I'm a little quick to say this in the first week of this game being out. I think Splatoon will. Now, Ted has taken a commanding lead in the last 10 seconds here. It looks like Ted is going to walk away with this match. Yeah, uh, Cap's going to have to do something crazy, oh. which he did not, nope. in order to win. So, um, and look at that respect from these two gentlemen <laughs> shaking each other's hands. Right, Let's so go ahead and hear from the players. going into this match? Put paint everywhere. Get the balloons. Kill him with paint. And why did you lose? I don't know. <laughs> there was paint everywhere. <laughs> he got all the balloons. All right. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go ahead and all right, round one uh, switch over to the brackets. That's to me writing the brackets. Uh, that we have a more official bracket you for it. you guys to look at. That's so um, this is the bracket as it stood, and now Cab is taken out of the match and goes down to the loser's bracket, and uh, Ted actually advances to the winner's final because we have an uneven bracket. Yeah. yeah, and it was just it was a really good game played by Ted. Ted put, put in a, a solid performance, and uh, something I've also noticed, too, is that uh, there is a real solid strategy, even in this version, to lay down just as much paint as you can because it gives you real advancing and retreating options. Mobility, mobility, mobility. Now, in this fight, this is an interesting match uh, to me because uh, Max is a kind of, I wouldn't call him a pro player, but he is a very good Splatoon player. He has this at his home and has spent uh, many an hour playing it, whereas CLV, better known as the Squid, um, he only had played the Global Test Fire put out by Nintendo before this tournament. That's correct, and uh, I would say both of these players gave really solid performances, really, really good. Well, the thing is, Max and Squid are both really good gamers, but the thing that we can't forget is about Squid is um, he's just raw talent. Yeah, just raw talent. Um, he he was that he's that way with Marvel vs. Capcom. He's that way with Mortal Kombat. They don't spend a lot of time with these games. Um, way less time than almost any of us, but he still manages to hang with us whenever he picks up the controller. Now, talking a bit about weapons here, we've uh, we've got two players that have vastly different weapons in this version. One has an automatic weapon that it just lays down a massive field of fire, and the other one just shoots a very large bullet, not particularly fast. And as you can see here in the early portion of the match, they're, they're kind of going back and forth, a very even match at this point. I think these two weapons uh, kind of complement each other as far as having a close game is concerned because um, the, the weapon that shoots just one big ball of ink is obviously awesome for combat because all you need to do is get your cursor on your opponent once and boom, you take him out with one shot. Whereas with something like the splatter shot, you're going to have to get a lot more shots. However, um, I think the splatter shot is good for covering a lot of ground with your ink. And when you cover your ground with a lot of ink, you have mobility, which ultimately is the name of this game. Mobility. Yeah. Now, I would like to mention what we have here is one of our players, uh, CLV, is heading towards a power-up. And uh, last night it seemed to be the key issue that... Players would go for power-ups, and they could buy them an entirely new game, get them back in the match, or completely hinder them. There is a jumping power-up that will go off, and it can trade your position with your opponent, which can be really bad if you're right next to a bunch of balloons. And we actually saw that a couple of times last night. So right now, uh, Afro Max has taken a decided lead and is covering the ground with ink. Um... Max is a pretty impressive player from uh, just watching the casuals before the match. I definitely felt like like he, he would be a, a major contender. Um, Klob was going to compete in this tournament, but he had to go. I would have really liked to see the two of them uh, go against each other somewhere in this tournament. Oh, yeah. Both very naturally skilled gamers. It would have been interesting to see the different strategies that they threw at this. All right, folks. So what we have is going on right now is just Max laying down an absolutely oppressive game 
not giving CLV any opportunity to retake points, and uh, just being really sneaky. That was something that we were commenting on quite a bit, was that uh, Max was playing a very, very good sneaky squid game, just swimming right up on you when you didn't expect it taking you out in a few seconds. It, uh, it worked to his advantage quite a bit. Oh, and CLB getting stuck. Oh, and taken out. CLB is going to have to make some serious moves to get back in this game. Ooh, and we have a CLV kill there. Max directly on top of the point, taking back some, or uh, CLV on top of the point, taking back some points, but instantly splatterhouse by Max. Now, as you can see, uh, CLV is kind of hindered by the fact that Max has been laying down so much ink. He starts to reclaim some ground there. Max just absolutely oppressive with that repeater. Now, now we're into those double point seconds where every balloon really counts. Oh, and we have a mercy defeat. 30 points to 5. Max takes it. Max wins. Let's hear from these opponents. Try to make this janky thing. So, so Max, what was your strategy going into this? My strategy going into this was to get all the balloons, basically. Your guys' like strategy all sucks. Like, like, like all the balloons. We got 30 of them. We got 30 of them. Yes. You got, you're gonna come back in the loser's bracket? Uh, you're gonna come back and crush them? Pro probably. Probably not. That's dog. Dog? What? Dog? <laughs> Max moves on! <laughs> All right, so as we can see here, this is our bracket. Um, looks like Squid gets knocked down into the loser's bracket. Um, I believe our next match up is going to be um, Clob versus, not Clob, Cab versus the Squid in the loser's bracket. I think the camera needs to see that after the match. Once he wins. I love this song. Let me just down here so I can trust it's still on. Oh, and a first commanding kill by uh, CLV there. That's really more of just a mission statement than anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously, getting that first kill is advantageous because he can get a few balloons lead. Uh, this game makes you say sentences like that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, that's just a giant F you from the squid to Cat. Yeah, uh, if, what was even worse is that uh, uh, Cab had his hands on the uh, bazooka, which is a massively overpowered one. Oh, and taken out by a drone strike. How did you throw a drone? Yeah. Inky drone. Drony ink. So as we can see, here's a uh, power-up being used. And taken away before use. Dang, Cab's coming out pretty hard at the beginning of this match, yeah. but as we have seen multiple times in Splatoon... Um, you know, you can't really count the underdog out until the That's last true. minute. That's very true. There's Past Me doing some commentary. Yep, yep. Some good some good commentary there by Past Michael. <laughs> now, CLV is taking a really, really strong... Uh, command of the point here. He's trying to take all those balloons away before Cab can even get over there. And that's me in the background talking about some martial arts. That's past you. That's past you. <laughs> Your bill is past you. <laughs> it's funny because it sounds like a thing. Yeah. That's topical humor for you, folks. CLV taking even more of a lead. With that kill and balloon rob combo. And see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's really easy to become discouraged in a game like this, have somebody take the lead on you and think that, oh, that's it. Um, but once again, every single second counts in this game. You are always one splatter shot away from winning at Splatoon. Yep. Well, CLV's been really good about kill, balloon steal, kill. Um, it seems to be the, the best 
the best defense in this game is actually defense. You, uh, you lay under your point till the balloons spawn, and then when someone tries to take, you know, the last little bit of balloon that you've got left, you just annihilate them with your gun in their face. Yeah, it's, um, it can get very personal um, when it comes to Splatoon, just because, you know, when someone has a position just like what CLV just put himself into, where he has such a tremendous lead, and then you have to keep killing your opponent. You can't be nice to them because you have to keep their score down. Because if they get even five balloons away from you, that means that they are one kill away from winning the game. That's very true, very true. Ground very easy to take back as far as points is concerned. Not so easy to take back when you have a defensive opponent who knows how to use their weapon. Right now, the squid is taking a tremendous control over the map, covering a lot of the map with his ink, giving him the mobility he needs to get to the balloons in time. And with 25 points on the board to two points, we're looking at a very dominating game at this point. Yes, yes. Now that's something... Oh. That's, That's okay. not something you wanna you wanna get caught in right there. Uh, CLV was caught very closely in that uh, being surrounded by his opponent's paint. And uh, that's a dangerous situation because if you get struck there, you're not going to be able to respond as quickly as you need to. Yeah, I've had that happen to me many times where I feel like I would have had the tools to defend myself, well, but I, I think made we're a misstep. See it right here. But just like that, he reached the 30 mark, claiming victory. The squid wins. Uh, and moves on. That knocks out. Um, that knocks out Cab from the tournament. Valiant effort by the Cab, though. Me, for his first time putting his hands on the game. What was your strategy going into this match? Well, well, you see, it's it's a lot of hard work and training, and you know, squid hats. And, yeah, it was. I was destined for this. So, so tell me, tell me, Cab, you just got knocked out of the tournament. I did. So, it's okay. It's 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 all right. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> Rape is never okay. <laughs> so, 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 how, how do you how do you feel about your performance today? I I don't know. I mean, I I expected to do better, but you know, I didn't expect to go. I didn't expect to do wonders. It's just like, well, wise words from a wise man, who's not even remotely from Japan. And that is me making a very weird. Michael-esque joke. So as we can see, um, we're going to have Cab knocked out of the tournament and Squid moves on. So I believe our next match is actually going to be your match against Max. That's very true. Um, this match was a, uh, I guess you could call it a a very solid effort on both of us. Now, I made the choice to pick this stage because earlier that day, the uh, the Max had said that he was not fond of this stage, so I figured I could I could gain some ground on him. But as I came to find out, gaining ground on Max is not an easy thing to do. Spoiler alert! <laughs> but um, but that does show you the importance of casuals beforehand. A lot of times when it comes to tournament play, people have a tendency to avoid casuals because they don't want their opponent to find out all their tricks. That's However. True. If you sit down with your opponents and you play ahead of time, they may find out some of your tricks, but you could find out some good information about them. Now this stage is really, I find that high ground position um, that you're trying to get to, the Jews trying to get to, uh, is actually a crucial spot within this uh, map, whether you're playing for balloons or you're playing um, turf war online. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, uh, good place to be. Uh, it offers you a high ground, which is always good, and if you're using a weapon like I am, which is almost a one-hit kill if it hits its opponent directly, it offers uh, a good chance to uh, put down. Now, I made a mistake there, backed off a little bit, and Max took a commanding lead in the time that I, I retreated. Now, you're using um, that one shot. I mean, we don't know the names of the weapons, and forgive us. Uh, like I said, the game literally just came out uh, when we were making this tournament. Um, I really prefer kind of the rapid fire guns for this mode. You seem to like that one shot. Um, what is your thought process behind that one shot and its adv advantages well, towards uh, this tournament? When you're playing a very dominant player, they like to kind of squid up in front of you and then just shoot directly into into your face. And I like to have a larger weapon because it allows you the opportunity of giving them a little something to think about when they're going to try that. When you're using the multi-fire weapons, basically they know they have a certain amount of time that they can challenge you before things go bad for them. Um, with a one-shot weapon, anytime they decide to run up and give you a little chin music, you can 
definitely punish them for doing so. Now, Max, in this game, we're going to go ahead and call him the Squid Ninja, or the Squid Ninja, or Ned. Ned? I don't know. He's a Squid Ninja, because it is insane how he's able to uh, cloak himself and move from ink puddle to ink puddle so fluidly and just pop out, boom, and take you out like he did just there. You had a deciding lead against him, and with one kill, you guys are even. Yeah, it, uh, it became a very interesting game here. Um... Now, Max made very good use of that bubbler, uh, putting it a nice shield around himself and made sure that he couldn't be challenged by my one-hit kill weapon. It's basically a guaranteed victory on his end as long as he can aim properly. Yeah. Speaking of aiming, um, I personally prefer to play with the motion controls, but for this tournament, we turn the motion controls off so that all the players will be playing on an equal battle ball. Yeah, and as you can see there... Uh, high ground actually does make a huge difference in this game because you've got a uh, an arcing shot uh, for almost all weapons, and uh, that arc can really play the difference. You're trying hard to capture him here against that. Uh, there he goes. Squid Ninja just disappears. Comes out of nowhere. Are you going to be able to take him out? What a great competition oh. between the two of you. He took it back. He took he it takes back. back. He takes it back. And now that look at this commanding lead. Horrific Max lead with that kill. That is insane. The Squid Ninja... Um, skills are the truth. They are the truth. <laughs> there he goes again, popping out of nowhere. You can't trust him. Now I managed to take that. That's a him. nice shot. That was that was a lucky shot. That was a very lucky shot. You can pretend you did that on purpose with your raw, unadulterated third-person shooting skills. Yes. Now you're on the run from Max. Oh, and I got He's stuck getting in stuck in the ink. He's in a good position, but Max is right on top of him. And then he squid ninja. Just like that, he pops out. It's like crazy how he's able to just yeah. appear out of nowhere. Um, very impressive player, considering how early in the game's um, lifespan this tournament is taking place. Exactly. Now, I got the ink zooka here. And uh, my strategy with the ink zooka is try to lay down as much as possible. But he's raining down that blue ink. You really scared him away from that high point, though, using the Inkzuka. I thought that was a pretty good strategy on your behalf. Now, here I am in double point balloons, which means I have an opportunity to take a serious lead back here. Nice shot that claims his territory. He's going to be able to take a few balloons, but just like that, he ate the last balloon. He's going to have to kill Max in order to win this tournament. Is he going to be able to take out Max as he chases Squid Ninja? No, does the not crowd happen. Did not approve. They clearly were rooting against Max on that. Yeah, end. you know, I felt the love of the crowd in that in that particular match. Let's hear what these uh, competitors have to say. So, so what was your strategy going in there? You're the closest one. Uh, my strategy was not to get fucked, and I <laughs> failed. <laughs> you guys make for great interviews. What was your strategy? My strategy was uh, to get out before I could get like killed for like almost half of my bullets. That's true. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, let's head over to the brackets. So we just had our last fight in the uh, winner's bracket until the winner's final. Max won that. That sends the Jew down into the loser's bracket. So we're going to go ahead straight to that match. This is the Jew versus um, the Squid, CLV. Yeah, this was an intense match. Right now we're going to be looking at CLV's cam in case you guys weren't able to put that together. Um, unfortunately, just due to the materials we have at the Nexus, we can only show you one player at a time. So this is the way that we do it. Just like that, the squid takes a lead. Um, starting off really strong here. I, I, if, I think that opening move, kill your opponent, take the balloons, it seems really logical. But uh, on a day one, it was actually a pretty surprising strategy that caught a lot of people off guard. Boom, but he hits the water, and this is where that day one tournament uh, shows, is that none of us really understand our maps when the turn when the game first came out. Yeah, when you play first-person shooters, as I'm sure some of our audience is probably going to know, uh, there are this idea of kill pits, uh, just places where somebody can jump off in the wrong direction and, and have a death. And uh, I was really surprised, actually, that Splatoon offered kill pits uh, almost immediately. I thought that was a really interesting idea from their point. 
And as you can see here, CLV is laying down a commanding lead. Really just dominating the balloons and getting out before I really have a chance to respond. Really, it's imperative for the Jew to get some kills at this point uh, to really claim the lead. Obviously, we got the double point balloons later on in the match that could potentially help you. But ultimately, at this point, your major focus should definitely be just that, which yes. is taking out the squid. Look at how much points disappeared off of his bracket from that one kill. That's impressive. That's that that gun took out two balloons at once. I don't even saw that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the b the gun zooka thing that he is using right now is the weapon I was using in the last match, and uh, it has a really effective ability to take out multiple balloons at once, which is another reason why I really like it. Here we have another firefight between the two players. Who's going to take who out? The squid takes the Jew out. We are zero to sixteen. That is a beautiful lead for the squid. And then he's doing a little bit of hiding. Now, uh, I will I will give kudos to the people who are on the game pads at this tournament. I didn't see any screen peeking. No, no screen peeking, which is which is good. You know, it shows a, a sportsmanship and camaraderie amongst players. Absolutely, because the person on the game pad could have an advantage over the person on the TV screen because uh, the person on the TV screen can't look over at the game pad to see where his opponent is, whereas vice versa, you could. Oh my gosh, we are 0 to 21, 0 to 22, the squid taking a huge lead, popping out of nowhere, taking out the Jew, this is a vicious game on the part of the squid. Yeah, squid was really laying it down, I was having a hard time keeping up with him. So graceful. Oh, but I take a, a nice kill. kill, nice kill, very good from a nice long range. Now, the key here for the Jew is he needs to get those balloons. I know this seems very simple, but the focus needs to be balloons, murder, balloons, murder. Murder, murder, balloons, murder. Nice murders. Good murders. Solid murders. That was a really impressive squid jump. Um, I don't know if I would have the testicular fortitude to take that jump. And just like that, the Jew takes another kill. Yeah, it was at about this point in the match that I uh, decided to say I don't care anymore and I'm going to uh, shoot him in the face as much as I can. That's a pretty important strategy when it comes to this balloon fight. Right now the squid has a high ground, but he drops down, coming down for an Assassin's Creed kill. Is he going to get the shot or is he going to get smashed by the Jew? Oh, we have a hostile standoff here for a moment. With one minute left, all the balloons become double points. This is going to be his chance to take the win decisively at this moment. The Jew's fighting hard to keep hold of the match. The squid dives away. away. <laughs> Sound of his squidding away. And then we see... The Jew jumping out, and the squid is trying to find him, and the Jew's hiding very, very well. Insert Holocaust joke here. <laughs> oh, this is fire a fight. rapid fire fire fight, and I took five points away from him. That's very good. And I am right on top of those balloon points. Especially in this late game, the game becomes super close with the squid falling down. We have the Jew in the lead. The squid is going to have to do something crazy in these last 10 seconds. And balloon show up. He gets one balloon. He needs one more balloon to take this tournament. Is he going to do it? And just like that, in the last second, he wins the match. What a close match. Very good comeback on the Jew's part. But the squid was just a little bit better on that day. That is what we call in the video gaming industry clutch as fuck. Oh, my God. So, Squid, what was going through your mind in those last few seconds? Oh, hey, look, water. I like water. Let's get some water. Oh, no, water. Oh, God. How's about you? Those last few seconds, you were in the lead. You saw Squid. What was, what was happening mentally? Mentally, the message going through my mind, Colin, was hills Colin. suck. What? Hills really suck. <laughs> hills suck. I got stuck behind the hill. Couldn't hit any more balloons. I lost. Damn. All right. All right, so we are back to brackets here, and that takes me out of losers and takes me out of the tournament entirely. I was not exactly proud of my showing. Who do we have? In our next bracket, we have... Uh... That wasn't that was even remotely what you said. He's rude. Yeah, we have Max and Ted in this bracket, and uh, this was a, a very, very interesting match. Don't do 
Oh, a drone strike! Right in the face. Laying down a pattern with that Inksuka. And right now we are looking at Ted's perspective. But Max is on the gamepad. And uh, the, the night of the tournament, Max was very fond of the uh, the, the gamepad using the, uh, the the screen. It was very, very solid, very dominant with that. Oh, man. Are we This is the uh, winner's finals. Yes, this is winner's finals. I just came back because I was taking care of a dog. It's the Nexus's mascot. So, as we can see right now, we're taking a look at Trevor's screen, better known as Ted, in the tournament bracket. Um, he's laying down a lot of ink, gathering balloons. At this early game, it's really hard to say who's going to be the more dominant one. Both of them have managed to show very good games in the past night. So, let's see how this thing goes as the Ted takes a lead against Max, but just like that, Max takes him out, which negates points from Ted and allows Max to take the lead. Oh, we have a missed drone strike there. Drone strike's very effective in the game, laying down a solid path of ink for you to take forward and also being a lethal weapon for your opponents to run into. As you can see, the ink begins to rain down. That's a very smart, intentional handicap that Max just laid down in front of Ted, trying to slow him down um, to prevent him ultimately from getting to where he wants to go. Yeah, this is also a really interesting match because both of our opponents are using uh, the automatic weapons that lay down a large field of fire and many, many blocks of ink per second. What an amazing spread by Max. Only be thwarted by Ted, who inks away. <laughs> that was a good retreat on, on Ted's point. You know, the score doesn't look even, but right now I feel like they're both playing a pretty good game. But just like that, the Squid Ninja strikes again. Max pops out of nowhere, slamming down the points for Ted. Yeah, he uh, he robbed him quite of a quite a uh, take on lead there. It'll be interesting to see if Ted's able to mount a, a comeback from here. That's getting a power up here, but look at Max's score. It's just skyrocketing. He's clearly somewhere that Ted is not, as his points just slammed up above Ted's. Now we're at 23 to 4. It's going to be really hard for Ted to take this back at this point. Yeah, he's uh, he's looking at an uphill battle here. Now we are just one second away. The balloons show up. That means Ted... Ted's nowhere near balloons. Is Max near balloons? I see Max's score rising 29. Is he about to hit the 30-point mark? Oh. Yes, he is. That takes the winner's final. I mean, Max goes on to the finals, and Ted settles into the loser's finals, where he will go against uh, the squid. All right, we're going to be looking at our brackets here again. And as you can see, that knocks Ted completely out of the tournament. That's a damn shame. That is. Wait, no, that puts Ted into the loser's bracket. That, that puts Ted into the loser's bracket. All right, here we are in the loser's finals. We have Ted in the green squid and squid in the blue Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this match a going. Loser's finals, first ever Nexus, violence for violence, Splatoon tournament. We are watching the squid speed. So... As past me said, violence for violence, the, this is a part of a long campaign of the Nexus in which we are going to be having a series of tournaments in which the victor of the competition wins a copy of some old school UFC, Violence yep. for Violence. There you go. Uh, we, what we just saw there was uh, the, the squid actually made a, a little bit of an error. He jumped off the side of the map and into some water. Once again, it's understanding your maps is crucial. Back in the day of GoldenEye, basically the person who understood the map was the person who won the game. And I think with Splatoon, that's going to be a very similar story. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I would say that the solid understanding of the map, uh, your zoning areas for where your balloons are going to show up, 
And uh, your quick travel paths are going to be your uh, solid weapons to a victory. When it comes to Splatoon, there's a lot of choke points that we've come across in the map in this first week of Splatoon play. Um, so I think once some people begin to really capitalize and learn how to hold those choke points, we're definitely going to be separating the boys from the men at that point. Just like that, the squid slams down some ink, taking Ted all the way down to one point. Now, interestingly, once somebody is at one point, you can't take that point away from them. No, no. And I think that's a that's a good thing. That uh, stops them from being completely salty and acting like little bitches. Like little biznatches. Oh, an absolutely brilliant strategy on the squid point. Just sitting on top of those balloons and uh, defending the bulk of them from being able to be taken. And now he can. Now Ted has let himself be known by splattering that ink. So right now we can see the squid is on the attack. And we saw some stray shots there from from Ted. So a squid knows where he is, and he's deciding that he's going to get out of there, get back to where the point is. And that's a really awesome uh, difference between this game and something like Call of Duty is that there are sometimes where killing your opponent is the number one goal. Other times it's better just to get ahead of your opponent and get to where the balloons are going to show up first. Now, Squid found himself up on that high rise, and he was away from being able to hit the, the balloons there. I think that's a mis bit of a misjudgment on his case. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. But right now, with Ted having five points and the Squid having 22 points, this is looking like a close game. Once again, remember, um, Ted, had, this is the first time he ever played Splatoon, and he's um, made it both to the winner's finals, um, and he's here not in the loser's finals, but um, really having a hard time dealing with the squid, but the squid also has only really played one or two other games. Yeah, uh, they were both team. really good natural talents. We've got that last balloon leaving it at 29. 29 points. This is getting absurd. Um, the squid puts down a sprinkler to really slow down Ted. At this point, Ted's going to have to do a lot of murder in order for him to take the victory. And uh, they're Ted both is making his way to that point on the opposite side. The squid has to rush over there. He cannot let Ted take hold of the game at this point. And I think we're about There's to see There's some balloons right, right there. That looks like the squid Oosh. takes the game. Very, very good game between the two of them. This will uh, knock Ted out of the tournament and move the squid on to the, uh, the finals. Actually fulfilling the prophecy made earlier in this video that he would, in fact, come all the way back from losers to the final bracket. All right, let's go ahead and hear the uh, oh, on stage. So match. here's the real story, guys. Here's the real story. They met up in their very first match of the tournament, and Max knocked out the squid. The squid has climbed the ladder all the way up to Max. Now, this is a double elimination tournament, which this is the big bullshit of double elimination. It means squid has to win twice, and Max... Only has to win once. Do you want me to Howard Cosell that? I will, I will Howard Cosell. Are you gonna are you gonna talk over? Are you gonna, gonna yeah. commentate? You can yeah. do that. Alright, so we're gonna have Megas, aka Eggman, aka the Jew, as our announcer for the grand finals of Splatoon Nexus Tournament. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here today is a meeting of the Titans. A meeting of the greatest and the best that Nexus has to offer in Splatoon. Level selection is going on right now. These two friends is meeting on the battlefield. Inky, Painty Battlefield. These two. And the match is off. We have a solid trail of green paint being laid down by our I don't know if I mentioned it, but we are watching Max's seed. We have a first a first power up, it's a disruptor. Giving away location. Oh, Max has a bubble. First part of the match here is going pretty evenly. Uh, 
Oh, and we have our first kill by Max in a close range Splatterhouse Splatoon Splat. Oh, and a showdown. Ring around the rosy. Who's gonna die a posy? <laughs> oh, and a lucky shot. Max takes it again. This is turning into a killing field. Max literally walking away with the entire match because he's Caleb. <laughs> Oh, risky move on the elevator. Let's see if it pays off. Oh! Uh-oh! Max getting face challenged. Challenged to the face. Oh! Pegged again! Max using his squiddy powers to get the squid out of there. Just absolutely destroying balloons, left and right. Oh my god. This is getting ridiculous. Oh, the oh, perfect so placement. Sneaky. He's so sneaky. This what? what? Ladies and gentlemen, it's like Evander Holyfield is fighting a retarded baby. <laughs> And the baby gets smacked. Nope, doesn't do anything. <laughs> Just keep going. Oh my god, this could be it. This could be it right here, folks. Oh. And the first kill of the match from our Squid League opponent. <laughs> oh. That was ballsy. <laughs> What we used to call the male cow, ballsy. <laughs> well, got a little sneaky peeky ah! here. Oh no! Oh! Death from above. Drop down on him like the white man on Al Qaeda. Oh, pink bazooka blasts are flying! But he keeps his cool and gets to the balloons. Laying oh, down man. a serious cover fire. Oh, man. Getting pretty close now. Only five points away from a mercy kill. Oh, man. I can't and he sneaks away in the cover of night. Or <laughs> green paint. One of the t'other. Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is it. I think oh we god. have destruction. Oh god. Oh no. Oh god. Oh, oh no. and in our last oh minute, we have a, a failure on the Wii U. Oh god. You were dead anyway, so yeah, there was no way to save that one. Yeah. A beautiful colored commentary by Pass Jew. As we can see, Max wins the tournament. So now let's go ahead, go to the closing ceremonies for Splatoon and just Nexus like Tournament. That Max wins. Your so, prize is that we take you outside and beat you for five so, minutes. So, so come, come, <laughs> over, come over here, Max. All right. I don't know you can check if the camera's on me. Here. So, the ultimate fighting championship, the old school stuff. This is no holds barred. Men beating the shit out of men. Okay. Tournament style. You can pick any one of these. You just decide which men you'd like to see hurt each other. And you go home. Oh, dude, look at that mustache. I, I can't. That's, is that Dan Severn? Is that Dan Severn? Amanda, is that Dan, that's Dan Severn, right? Oh, yes. Dan Severn. That's a good one. Wow. Yeah, look at that. Oh. That is a mustache. So distinguished. That mustache. That distinguished Dan Severn mustache. So he's heading home with UFC 12. Good work, man. That was dumb. <laughs> Respect. What? You can 